Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, I'm inside the house today, ladies and gentlemen. Very chilly day. I haven't even made it out to the bunker. I'm not brave enough to walk the 50 feet. So on this video, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk about budget prepping. I'm going back to doing videos about prepping on the cheap because of the times that we live in. Uh, I've stated this several times that about 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, but even those Americans need to be prepared. So today I'm going to be reviewing one of the cheapest stoves that I've seen on Amazon. I think it was like less than 12 or $13, but it looks very unique. And first I want to show you something else that I got that has nothing to do with the stove. And that's this. These are called my charge. And here in Alaska, especially, it's very difficult to get these in the mail, if not impossible. So whenever Costco has these, we try to pick up one or two. We picked up this one along with a couple more, I don't know, one or two years ago. And what they are is just a small battery bank that will charge your phone or your tablet. And it's 10,000 milliamps. Now this comes with two charging ports, one for an iPhone and one that's a type C USB. You can also put a type A USB on here. I'm not sure if you can see it because it's kind of dark to charge if you have a wire. And the way that you charge this device is AC. Right. This is 10,000 milliamps. And I remember paying like it was, I think, 29 bucks on sale or something like that. Our regular price was like thirty nine dollars. But the reason I'm telling you this is because Costco has not these, but these in stock right now, which is the same brand. It's my charge. But these are 15,000 milliamps instead of 10,000. They come with the two same charging ports. You can charge them the same through an AC wall outlet. And in addition to the USB charging port, if you have a wire, it also has a USB-C charging port. So I thought I'd let you know in case you live in a state where it's very difficult to get uh, batteries sent to you over the mail and if you have a Costco near you. Now let's get on with this review video, ladies and gentlemen. This is the cheapest, almost cheapest, it was like 12 bucks or something like that on Amazon, but very unique stove that I found. Now check this out. I haven't even taken it out of the box. I figured we'd do that together so we can see how it works together. What I'm going to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to take this out of the box. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what type of fuel it takes, hook it up, turn it on, and see if we can boil a couple of cups of water, see how long it takes in optimal conditions because I'm inside my house and it's about 64 degrees or so in here, right? So this is optimal conditions, but it gives us a gauge on what this little thing can do. Before we take it out of the box, let me show you what the name is. It's called the Kovac K202 Portable Card Stove. And it's obviously a camping stove. And it works off of butane, ladies and gentlemen. But not the butane that we're all used to seeing camping stoves work off of. It works off the can butane, which I thought was pretty interesting. So being that this is a prepping on the cheap item, this, from what I understand, maybe not here in Alaska, but this right here is like the least expensive fuel that you can use with a camping stove. So I thought that being that this was a pretty inexpensive stove and that this is the most inexpensive fuel that you can get, you can buy it by the case, that it would be a pretty good match up for me to show you guys now if you hear a little whizzing in the background that's my toyo stove keeping my house warm in this negative 32 degree day so please excuse that so let's go ahead and open this up and see what in it i think without even opening it that if it just works good enough to heat water that it will be worth the 12 dollars or so that i paid for but right off the bat you can see that it comes in its own little pouch it does have some kind of instructions in here, right? but we don't need instructions, ladies and gentlemen. It's got a little pull string here so that we can open it up and see what it looks like. I'm kind of excited. This is a pretty, pretty good price for this. I'm hoping that it works well. I can see that it comes with a Pizzo starter. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen. That's all. This is all that it comes with. And look at this, this is a pretty nice looking stove. Right here, we can see that it's got, uh, this is the connector so that you can put your, your fuel on it. This looks like it's the fuel adjuster. It allows you to put the level of the flame to where you want it. Obviously, here's your little pizzo, look at this. Now, how does it feel? It actually feels pretty sturdy. 
And uh, here's the little pizzle right here. Let's see if we can see a flash. I'm assuming that if you press down on this, you're going to see a little flash of the pizzle. And you can. Look at that. And if you turn it upside down, it's got a few legs. So far for 12, 13 bucks, I'm thinking it's not bad. So that's it right there. You can see the burner right there. This is stainless steel. Okay, stainless steel. And I can only assume that this here is probably aluminum. Pretty sure it's not stainless steel. But they do sell these in different colors. Very simple. Nice, easy to set up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I always get this when I make a review video of a stove or something like that, and I'm using it inside. Our home is equipped with a CO2 detector. I have fire extinguishers on hand very nearby, and it is very safe for me to do this inside. Now, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that where you put your fuel has a couple of tabs, one right here and one right here. Now, I'm assuming that you're going to have to line up one of the tabs with this little cutout on your butane right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is this one right here seems to be sticking out a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert the lip on the bottom one, put it in, and then twist. There you go, and it's on. You just have to make sure that when you turn this on or when you put this on, that your stove is off. Okay, now we should be ready to rock and roll. One thing right here that I just noticed, check this out. See that? So right now your stove is not balanced. So we're going to have to put something under here. Let's see if we can take this and fold it up. The little bag that it came in, fold it up and put it under the bag. There you go. Now your stove is balanced. And now to start it, we're going to go ahead and turn on the gas. And then we're also going to go ahead and click it. Now, in a perfect world where I wasn't recording this, I would have this turned the other way around, but we can make it work this way anyways. Just don't put your face too close to it if you're doing it like this. All right, let's go ahead and turn the gas on just a little bit. Let's see if you can hear it. Look at that. It worked on the first try, ladies and gentlemen, and that's pretty low right there. Let's bring it up. That's about halfway through. And that right there is open all the way. And what I'm going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to go ahead and get a small pot with two cups of water. And we'll see how long it takes for it to heat it up, at least to boiling or close to boiling. When we can see the little bubbles inside. That's going to give us a gauge of about how long it'll take for you to prepare enough water to, let's say, prepare a freeze-dried meal. Because most freeze-dried meals that I've seen out there, they usually take between one and a half to two cups of hot water. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have two cups of water, and this is a pretty decent size pot right here to put it up here, and it looks like we can put an even bigger pot. You see, we, I put it here in the middle, and it looks like we can put an even bigger pot on there. So we've got two cups of water in here, and I've learned throughout the years, ladies and gentlemen, of doing this to go ahead and show you all uh, you know, some of the things that I might get called out on. So here is a thermometer. I'm putting it in here. And I'm just going to wait about two or three seconds or so. I know you probably can't see it from there, but I'm going to push hold. All right, I'm going to push hold on this button here so that you can see what the temperature of the water is. And let's see. I don't even know what it is right now. It's uh, 52.5 or something like that. Yeah, 52.2 is the temperature of the water. Okay, that way you know that I didn't put water in here that was already hot. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start this. And I'm doing this by feel, really. Let's hope that, uh, there you go, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and start our timer as soon as I get this taken care of. That way I don't make a mess, all right? So here's our timer, zeroed out. Let's go ahead and turn this on low first. And there you go, you can see that it turned on. Let me start my timer. And you can see that our timer started, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on high. Or as high as I can get it while being safe, Okay. I don't want flames all over the place. And I'm not going to put a lid on it, okay? I'm just going to leave it open like that.
and it's almost open all the way so it's almost on the highest setting that you can have it and our flames are not going crazy they're about reaching the perimeter so I'm not going to go ahead and put it up any higher let me see let me see if it'll work a little I don't want to do it in a way ladies and gentlemen that would be unsafe either indoors or outdoors all right, that right there is completely open on high. And we are at what? I think it shows that we just passed a minute. So let's see what it takes for this to come up to a boil. Two cups, ladies and gentlemen, two cups. Now, from previous experience, ladies and gentlemen, I know that a jet boil can heat or bring to a boil. I believe it's one cup of water in like 100 seconds, which is pretty good. It means that in less than three minutes, you can get two cups of water coming to a boil in an environment that's indoors, but not outdoors. Outdoors, it takes a little longer, depending on how cold it is outside. Here, a couple of days ago, I did do a camping experiment outside with a new tent that I purchased, and I tried to heat up a couple of cups of water to make some coffee. And it took like five, six minutes to heat it up. Why? Well, because outside it was like negative 20, negative 25 degrees. But this right now seems to be doing a pretty good job. I can see bubbles already. It's about 187 degrees right now. See that? About 187.5 and we are at three, four minutes. This is definitely good enough for you to rehydrate some freeze-dried foods or dehydrated foods. I'm going to go ahead and call that a boil, ladies and gentlemen. Let me go ahead and uh, before I turn, we're at 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Let me go ahead and turn this off safely. That way I don't burn myself. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say that was a successful experiment. And I can tell you that it hasn't been more than about a minute since I turned this off. And I can touch this. And it's warm but nowhere is near hot. Let's go ahead and take this off and see how it is taking it off. Look at that, you didn't even hear any bit of a whisk or anything like that. And something that I always do whenever I disconnect fuel from any camping stove, I always open it up a little bit. That way if there's any pressurized fuel in there, even a little bit, it will escape. Let's see. Nope, there was none in there. I didn't hear anything. So let's see how easy it is to close this back up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time that I've ever used this stove. Obviously, you saw me take it out of the box for the very first time, and uh, I really like it. I think that it's definitely worth $12, $13, and you can use fuel with it that's not the most expensive type. I would say that you would not be able to use this outside in very cold weathers, but if you find yourself not having the availability of being able to use your stove, your range, because maybe it's electric and then there's a grid down, then this, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, will get you through a few days, depending on how many cans of fuel you have and how much cooking you actually do. That's one of the reasons why I've always stated that there is a place in a prepper's pantry for freeze-dried foods. Because, for example, let's say that you do lose electricity and you find yourself with only a couple of cans of this in a small stove. Well, freeze-dried foods, all you have to do is go ahead and heat up a couple of cups of water per serving. And there you go. You have a meal. Whereas, let's say that if I wanted to make rice using this stove, I'm very certain that I can because it has a pretty good adjuster, flame adjuster. However, you're looking at 20, 30 minutes of using fuel to cook rice when you could just spend five or six minutes heating up your water and then putting it inside of your entree, whatever it may be, of freeze-dried food. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got something out of this. I'll leave the links on a pinned comment if you want to go check this out. And I'm going to keep doing these videos where you can prep on the cheap. That way, everyone can get prepared and no one will have an excuse not to. Other than that, have a great day. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that Opus is going to have a 
flash sale on the 25th of January where they're going to have their Opus solar generators on the best prices that they have been, in my opinion, so far this year, which is easy to say because it's just the beginning of 2024. But in all honesty, they have great prices for their flash sale. And don't forget to go watch this video that I put up a few days ago so that you can have a chance to win an Opus 1800. Opus was graceful enough to give us an Opus 1800 to give away to one of you, but you have to go watch this video and enter to win on this video. It doesn't cost you anything. As long as you live in the lower 48s where they can ship it to you, you can enter to win, ladies and gentlemen, and somebody's got to win it, so it may be you. I hope that someone that really needs it gets it. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm walking to my bunker here, and it is about... I would say about negative 34, right? So why does that matter, AP? It's cold in Alaska. Yeah, negative 34 degrees Fahrenheit. But this is what I want to show you. These hybrid lights, they've been sitting out here for a couple of days now. Uh, I used these during my last camping trip experiment where I was testing out a new tent. Video will be coming soon. And I forgot that I left them here after I cleaned up. Now check this out. Again, these have been sitting here for a couple of days. Look at this. I was amazed because I turned it on just to see if it would turn on, but look. It works the way it's supposed to work. Amazing. That's what I mean when I say that you get what you pay for with quality stuff. This is the Hybrid 600, Little Lantern. And now granted also, I had this Hybrid 600 in my tent the entire time that I was out in the cold and it's still working. You can see there that it's saying, A, one of two things, I'm very cold or I'm almost out of battery power. I think that's what that means. It's almost out of battery power, but it still turns on at negative 34 degrees.